Hi everyone. So I recently got this uh, Raspberry Pi display case from a company called EVCiv. Uh, they sent it to me for review. And I've been checking it out and it's actually um, really quite interesting. So it's basically a Raspberry Pi case, but of course it has this built-in 10.1-inch uh, uh, touchscreen. And unlike a lot of the other um, uh, display cases available, it can actually be used as an external monitor as well. So it has uh, USB-C input and HDMI input, which is pretty neat. So I thought I would do a uh, time-lapse video of the unboxing and assembly. Uh, it was all fairly straightforward and uh, the packaging was good. Everything arrived uh, in good condition, nothing was damaged, nothing was rattling around. Um, so basically right when you open the box you get the, uh, the display case and of course there's a protective film on it. Uh, the, the display case is really nice. It has a nice sturdy feeling. There's, uh, there's no like uh, rocking or um, like, you know, fit and finish problems. It's all very good. Uh, they give you a regular HDMI cable, a USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-A cable, and then a power supply, a 12 volt, 2 amp. That will power both the display and the, and the Pi. They give you two adapter plates, one for the Raspberry Pi 4 and one for the earlier Pi 3, and I think it might work on earlier versions as well. And then they give you a screwdriver, a uh, USB cable for the uh, touch screen interface, and then those little adapters that plug into the um, connectors on the Pi. So this is the instruction booklet. It's a very simple build. Um, as, as you'll see, it's really straightforward. Um, but if you'd like, you can pause the video and uh, read the pages. So for that USB cable that we just saw on the uh, in the manual, um, you can either plug it in uh, externally, which is what I will be doing later on in the video, or you can solder it directly to the circuit board if you want to go that route. Um, I guess that'd be a cleaner way to do it, but I don't really see much benefit in, in going to that trouble. And so there's six screws that hold on the back. Um, don't forget the two in the middle. And then it'll pull off real easily. And then be careful not to pull it too tight because that uh, the cable for the fan is kind of short, so don't don't rip it out. There's a uh, little capped on tape uh, covers on each of the four uh, mounting uh, uh, mounting spots for the, the Raspberry Pi four, and you'll you'll need to peel those off with a, a pair of tweezers or or something like that. And so it includes a blanking plate if you are just using this as an external monitor, but you'll want to pull it out and then use the, the plate that matches your Raspberry Pi. It just slides in there and then the Pi can screw into those four mounting spots. So I had an idea that ended up not working as you'll see very soon. But basically, when the Raspberry Pi is installed, it's going to be difficult to reach that micro SD card. So I thought about um, using a piece of tape on the micro SD card to act as a um, like a little flag that you can pull on to pull it out. But as we're going to see, um, that idea doesn't really work out because the thickness of the tape uh, will prevent you from actually installing the SD or the micro SD card. So you can't quite get it all the way in. So. Uh, I kind of give up, and uh, as we'll see later, if you do need to get your micro SD card out, you can use a, a pair of pliers and very carefully pull it out, and that's what I had to do later on. Yeah, so at that point I gave up on that idea, uh, and then I proceeded with installing the, the Pi. So there's these little adapter boards. Uh, there's two that are used on the Raspberry Pi 4, and there's uh, the other two that are used on older versions of the Raspberry Pi. So one adapter plugs into the micro HDMI port, and one plugs into the USB-C port. And as we'll see right now, I have the HDMI adapter plugged into the wrong port. So that's the right way to do it. And then uh, when you put it in, 
you just have to kind of carefully align it so that the uh, the pin headers for those two adapter boards line up with the uh, the connectors down below. And then they just kind of press in pretty easy, pretty easily, and uh, everything lines up nicely, and you can install the four screws that secure the Raspberry Pi to the case. So they, they do provide a uh, small little screwdriver, but I decided to use my own just because it's bigger and easier to, uh, to grip. Uh, but either way, it works fine. And so this, this uh, USB cable is for uh, connecting the touchscreen interface to the Raspberry Pi. So uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of sticks out of the case and then routes in through to that connector. And uh, like I briefly mentioned earlier, there is an option to um, solder wires directly onto the Raspberry Pi circuit board if you don't want to have this USB cable kind of uh, sneaking out of the case. Um, but to me, it wasn't worth the effort to just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Not that big of a deal to me. That's where they show you on that page. And that's where they show you how to do it if you want to solder directly on. And so at this point, I was just verifying that I did everything, and, and I did. So you can close up the case, you just put the back on, and then secure it with the six Phillips screws. All right, so all, the, all that is left is to uh, apply power, so you can uh, use the included power supply. Uh, in case you're wondering, you cannot power it through the USB-C port on the side. You have to use that, that power adapter. And as soon as you plug in that power adapter, it'll turn on. And then right now it's booting into Ubuntu, which is the OS I had installed on my Raspberry Pi at the time. And so I was doing a quick test here, and at first the touchscreen was not working too well, and then I realized you need to, you need to pull off that protective film, and then it's uh, reliable and consistent. It's a uh, capacitive touch, touchscreen, multi-touch, and so you can pinch to zoom and all that, all that nice stuff. The display has uh, an OSD, of course, and you can go through and adjust brightness, contrast, that kind of thing. Uh, here I am just kind of poking around getting a feel for how it all works. The, the defaults are all fine though. You don't really need to be poking around in there if you don't want to. So there's a fan built into this uh, case and you can turn it off if you want. Um, it's not too loud, so I, I leave it on, but um, if you want it to be quieter, then you can turn it on. So at first I was trying to figure out why the audio wouldn't work, and I realized that at least on Ubuntu, if you go to uh, settings, the default is uh, not going to work. So you go to sound, and it will default to headphones, which uh, is not where the audio is playing. So you can't hear anything. But if you switch to the digital output, then it'll work. Front, left. Front, right. So I'm kind of curious if it's the same with uh, Raspberry Pi OS.
So that's something I didn't realize before. With Ubuntu, if you use your touch screen, uh, it will provide a touch keyboard, but with Raspberry Pi OS, it doesn't seem to, or at least it's not by default. But luckily I have a, uh, a little USB keyboard. Cool. So audio works. Uh, if you're using Raspberry Pi OS, you can right click the uh, speaker icon and just make sure HDMI is the uh, selected option. All right, so I've been using this for a while now and I'm actually very, very happy with it. Um, so it's got, obviously, as we saw earlier, it's got a touch screen and it's, it's um, fairly responsive. It's multi-touch, so you can pinch to zoom. The um, Colors and the viewing angles are very good. So, uh, let's see, is there maybe a... Okay, so there's some colors. Um, so, it's an IPS panel, so the, the viewing angles are very good. And, uh, yeah, I've been very happy with it. It's very compact, it's uh, very functional. And of course, you know, you have your Raspberry Pi in the back, so you can, uh, like I just have my little USB keyboard mouse uh, plugged in, and then of course you can connect other things as well. Um, and one of the neat features is, so of course you, know, you, have, you have power in, but you can also um, use this as an external monitor. So you can connect either via USB-C or HDMI to another computer and use this as, you know, like a, a portable display. So uh, on my laptop, it has um, Thunderbolt ports, which are, you know, USB-C. And uh, let's try that out. All right, and so obviously it's still showing the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, but if you press the leftmost button, it will bring up the input menus, and then you can use the arrow button to go down to type C. So it's showing up as a monitor here, and uh, so dis in case it isn't obvious, display one is the uh, the laptop, which is uh, right here. Display four, I guess, is going to be this uh, this main monitor. And since I am going to have the little display underneath it, we'll do that. So that is pretty cool. So for me, uh, I often end up. Um, doing software development and it'd be really nice to have this as a little you know uh, additional monitor that I could have uh, like task manager or any other um, statistics or development information on screen while I have um, you know my, my program running on the, the main 4k monitor and maybe some documentation on my actual laptop so that's pretty cool I like that a lot and it's one of the features that I haven't seen on other um, Raspberry Pi display cases and uh, as I mentioned earlier it looks like it supports HDMI. I haven't tested the HDMI because my laptop doesn't have uh, any of those ports built in. But I'm, I'm assuming it'll work identically. So that's really cool. I'm very, very happy with this uh, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, display case. So if anybody has any questions or comments, leave them down below. And I'll put a link to this uh, item in the video description.